John Krasinski's back after writing and directing a couple awesome Quiet Place movies. Here he is again behind the camera giving us a brand new film. What kind of scary, intense horror film is he going to bring to the table this time? A PG family film called If. As one does. This is going to be a spoiler-free review, so don't worry about me giving any details away, ruining the flick. Um, or you could be like the audience I went with and just not show up. Save yourself the heartache. Save yourself the trouble. If only I would have done that as well. Because as it stands, John Krasinski did not go three for three for this guy. In fact, I had a hard time sitting through this movie. I kept thinking, what if I did something better with my life? Maybe I wouldn't have ended up sitting in this chair watching this mediocre crap. It seems inevitable that at some point in a career, a director, a dad in this instance, gets to a point where they want to make something for their kids. We've seen it before. Remember Shark Boy and Lava Girl? <laughs> I'm still trying to forget. Apparently Krasinski already felt the need to do this, hence If is Born. You know, I could summarize the movie for you, but if you're familiar with Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, that's, that's the movie. I'm pretty sure he just ripped that off straight up. <laughs> Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, by the way, shout out. It was a great show, went six seasons, 2004 to whatever, whenever it ended. I'm not going to do the math on that. But yeah, very colorful, very silly, creative. Everything that this movie was probably at one point supposed to be, but never hit the landing. It's really odd that this is by the same guy who did A Quiet Place because there's like no depth of feel to any of this. It all feels very flat. And not even in just terms of cinematography, in terms of everything in this movie it feels like the energy has been sucked out of the picture it's got a very somber depressed tone to it all and it's not without a lack of trying the young actress who i believe is also in the walking dead in the later seasons that no one watched anymore because the show went to complete trash she's really good unfortunately this girl's been saddled with the work of carrying this entire picture and it's just not gonna happen ryan reynolds is here too but he feels awkward stiff out of place for the most part and john krasinski has a very minor supporting role he comes and goes throughout but for the most part he's off camera behind the lens doing his thing the premise is very simple his character just known as dad he's never given a name is very sick dying in the hospital his daughter B, played by Kaylee Fleming, has had to grow up a lot over the years. After the loss of her mom and now her dad in the hospital, she's trying to be the most mature, responsible kid she can be. Played off her name, that was unintentional, but we're going to roll with it. But strange characters start appearing, imaginary friends are showing up here and there, and she's going to find out that Ryan Reynolds' character, Cal, can see them as well, and actually is trying to find them homes, trying to find them kids to be imaginary friends for. Kind of like a Toy Story situation going on. So that's the majority of the plot. B and Cal teaming up to help these imaginary friends find a place to go. There's some twists, there's some turns. I thought it was all very obvious and on the nose. I'll leave it at that, but uh, no real surprises for me in this one. There are a lot of imaginary friends in this movie. They have different appearances, different animated styles to them. That's all clever, and some of it does look very cool. There's some creativity on display. Huge amounts of voice talent coming and going throughout this thing, of course, since it's an animated kids film. Aquafina has to have a voice in it. If you, if you know this channel, if you know me, Aquafina and I don't mix. I just, something about her voice hits me in all the wrong ways and I can't, I can't do it. I just, something about her just hurts my ears. <laughs> the main if in this movie, if stands for imaginary friend, by the way, it's a stretch. Even when they explain it, it's a stretch, is Blue, played by Steve Carell. And again, in Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, Blue is the main character in that too. That's an imaginary friend. It's just kind of odd how much this movie's stealing from that. And yes, their spellings are different. Blue in the animated show, I think is B-L-O-O, -O, but still it's, it's the same thing. Anyway, Steve Carell's voicing this character and I didn't like him at all. And I know John Krasinski was in an interview and he said, yeah, this whole movie was kind of built on the idea that Carell was gonna voice the character. And I'm not sure why, because it, that, that character just didn't work at all for me. I found him really annoying. There was a moment where he holds a note where he's not able to say if anymore because the girl forbids him to say it, but he can't help himself. So he's like, and that's all I'm going to do. But in the movie that goes on for what felt like eight minutes straight, I wanted to die 
That might have been a little dramatic. <laughs> Bottom line is this is a movie geared for younger audiences, but it's really slow, and I didn't think the jokes landed at all. And yeah, I still go to a lot of animated stuff because I enjoy it. And I think that a good night, a great one, will appeal to both kids and adults, knowing that adults have to take their little shitty kids to the movie, so let's entertain them as well. But I don't see this working out well for either party. There is a spot in the middle where they tour the homes that the ifs are in. That was very cool, very well shot. But otherwise, yeah, kind of a, kind of a waste, if you ask me. And I've seen this type of movie done so much better, mainly by Pixar films, Inside Out, Monsters, Inc., kind of having those little universes coming together. And I think this might have actually worked better had it been fully animated, because there are some shots in this where I think Krasinski's maybe showing the cracks, maybe showcasing that this isn't the type of movie that works for his talents. I'm going to give you an example. There's a scene where Blue is standing up in a kid's room, and Ryan Reynolds is talking to him. They do a side profile shot where they're both next to each other, but how it's framed up, it's not showing the lower part of their bodies. Reynolds is clearly way taller, way more elevated than Blue is. But if I were to pan that camera down, it wouldn't line up at all. Ryan Reynolds would have to have been on like three apple crates in order to make that differential work. It's just, there's weird shots like that. And there's some really bad green screen in this. For 2024, to have such terrible green screen effects is, is pretty bad. Overall, this film just felt off. Comedy wasn't hitting correctly. There was a weird flatness to the picture. Almost felt like a COVID movie. They shot it during the strike or something because stuff just felt unfinished. There was a full character arc that didn't really go anywhere at all with the boy in the hospital. I don't know, I was, I was just let down by this all around. I like a good family tearjerker from time to time, but this just didn't hit it for me. And I would have asked other people in the theater, but there were no other people in the theater. If you're a parent wondering if this is okay for your little one, again, it's PG, there's no real swearing, there's no real violence. Um, there's some, I guess, early on stuff that could be tiny, teensy, weensy bit scary if your kid's kind of a chicken shit. But no, I think overall this is a very safe movie. You just might have a hard time keeping the kid's attention because there's a lot of slower talking monologue parts and overly dramatic parts that don't need to be there at all. All right, those are my thoughts on If. Let me know if you went to this and you had a completely different viewpoint. If you liked it, you loved it, and you think I'm way off, that's fine. Or if you decided to avoid this altogether because you're an adult. Either way, I'd love to hear from you. Please, again, think about liking and subscribing to the channel. I post movie content all the time. And it's not always negative. I recently did a short talking about Marcel, the shell with shoes on, and how much I adored that film. Absolutely recommend watching that. And feel free to watch any other videos on my channel. If you want a positive one, I talked about the new Planet of the Apes, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Thought it was solid. So you can find that video along with like a thousand or so more. All right, hope to see you around. Take care.